Matt here from RetroOnly.com. Today we will be talking about how the original NES console saved games. Before we get into that, be sure and click the like and subscribe buttons below. Have you ever wondered how the original NES saved the games that were being played? No matter if you're playing an NES right now and want to know how to save your game, or if you're looking this up for a friend or to prove them wrong, we are here to help. So, how did the original NES save games? Sadly, the original NES did not save games at all. After a few years of the NES being released, there were some games that came out with internal memory that could save your game, but the original NES game system did not save games at all. If you are watching this, you can now go ahead and tell your friends that you were right, and back in the day you didn't have the option to save a game and continue it later. You either had to pause the game and leave the system on until the next time you were able to play, or start all over again the next day. History of the NES The NES is also known as the Nintendo Entertainment System, which was an 8-bit, third-generation, home video game console. It is a redesigned model of the company's family computer, known as Famicom, in Japan. The Nintendo Entertainment System has been one of the best gaming systems of all time and has brought some of the most brilliant games into the market. Popular Nintendo games such as Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, and Metroid have created the basis for many popular genres that are loved even today. The Nintendo Entertainment System Game Pack is the product storage system for the Nintendo Entertainment System. All authorized NTSCU and PAL district cartridges, or CARTs, are 13.3 cm tall, 12 cm wide, and about 2 cm thick. Early NES game packs are held together with 5 little screws. Games introduced after 1987 assigned with REV-A on the back of the name. These were upgraded ones that used two plastic clips that were molded into the plastic itself eliminating the need for the first two screws. This is the reason more established NES cartridges are known as five screws and are recognizable by their level tops and, as the name says, five screws rather than three. Around this time, the standard screws were also changed to 3.8 millimeter security screws to keep the ROMs inside from being altered. The back of the cartridges has a name with guidelines and maintenance of the cartridge, stating that the cartridge isn't to be stored in extreme temperatures, not to be put in water, and not to be cleaned with benzene, alcohol, or other such solvents. These cartridges come in gray color for standard games and in gold for games that had battery-powered storage. The codes for software and production were engraved as stamps on the back to relate with the product variant and the maker. So what was the role of cartridges in saving games? The NES utilizes a 72-pin configuration, as compared to 60 pins on the Famicom. To decrease prices and stock, some early games released in North America are Famicom cartridges joined to a connector to fit inside the NES hardware. Original NES cartridges are held together with five little open screws, as mentioned earlier. Famicom cartridges are formed somewhat in an unexpected way. Different from NES games, official Famicom cartridges were delivered in numerous colors of plastic. Adapters comparable to the famous gadget Game Genie were available that allowed Famicom games to be played on an NES. In Japan, a few different organizations made the cartridges for the Famicom. This permitted these organizations to build up their designs for other gaming companies if they ever stopped making cartridges for the Famicom. So did the original Nintendo ever save games? The cartridges, not the console, did save games. But the NES itself had no internal storage to talk about. This meant being able to save would rely totally upon the game cartridge. This capacity required additional storage or hardware to be included in the cartridge. 
This would cost more money and wasn't immediately available at the time of the NES console's release. This is why most games didn't have this functionality and most people were used to not having a save game even be possible at the time. A lot of older NES games didn't have saving features as that was too costly at that point. They generally utilized a password system because of this restriction. A few games had a battery reinforcement which would allow for saved information. The main issue with this was that batteries don't keep going forever. Even though you could replace the battery in the cartridge so it may be used for saving again, it is obvious that the saved information did not last forever. Most NES games that saved your games to the cartridge used what is called battery backed memory. This is a static RAM chip which is virtually the same as the system RAM utilized in the console itself. The main difference was that a battery inside the cartridge was used to ensure the information of this RAM wasn't deleted. In the long run, the battery would eventually die and this RAM would stop working until the battery was replaced or removed. There was a small bunch of games that were released that were using an EEPROM. This was a precursor to present day flash memory. These didn't require a battery and would recall the information until the chip itself began to die because of it being so old. If you own an NES Classic, the NES Mini though, and not an original Nintendo NES, you can save games anytime you want to by following the steps that we will mention next. Again, that's for the NES Classic, the newly released NES. So how do you save games using a suspend point on the new NES Classic? First, you're going to want to press the reset button on the console while you are in the game. This will create a temporary suspend point on the home menu, which is indicated by the flapping wings. Be sure to keep in mind that a temporary suspend point is not saved automatically and can be deleted if the system is powered off or if you start another game before you save it. Next, you're going to press down on the D-pad, which will move the temporary suspend point to a spare slot in the suspend point list. You will then want to press A to save it. Up to four suspend points can be saved for each different game. When there are no available save slots for your game, you can create a new suspend point, but the previous suspend point data will be lost. The save suspend point will be indicated by a blue save slot on the game list. You can lock the suspend points to avoid overwriting and deletion if you choose. To highlight an existing suspend point, use the D-pad then press down to lock it. To unlock it, just press down again. A locked suspend point is indicated by a yellow padlock sign in the suspend point list. While in the game list, a lock suspend point is indicated by a yellow save slot while it is in the game list. Conclusion Even though you cannot save the games with the original Nintendo, it is still one of the best gaming systems ever made. You would think that something that was produced back in the 80s wouldn't be such a worldwide known name in today's day and age. The only reason everyone knows this name instead of a different one is for the simple fact that Nintendo cared. They cared about what games they put out, they cared about how many they would release, and they even cared about what gamers thought of their games. So even though you can't go and save your game on the original NES, there is just something about the NES that makes everyone who plays it fall in love. This has been Matt from RetroOnly.com. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this video.